Well, what an exciting story. Uh, I don't know if you've have you ever uh, walked seven miles? Maybe some of the adults have in a foolish moment. Uh, maybe it's involved going up a mountain at the same time, maybe like Ben Lomond. I imagine that would involve at least seven miles up and down. But maybe some of the children haven't. It seems such, like such a long way to walk. But of course, in those days, they didn't have cars or buses or trains or taxis. So they, apart from maybe taking a donkey, that was really the only option from traveling from Jerusalem out to Emmaus was to walk. And as you've heard from the story, they ended up walking 14 miles because they went back to Jerusalem as well. So it was a long journey that they went on. Uh, And these folks were clearly upset. They'd had a pretty traumatic three days. At the beginning of the three days, they had seen this man, this enigmatic character, this what they call a powerful prophet, somebody who had come and taught amazing things. And he'd been crucified by the Romans, which is a pretty horrific thing to happen, executed in the way that they did it, the cruel way they did it in those days. And they had thought that he was the Messiah, which means the anointed one of God, the chosen one, the one who was going to come and rescue Israel. Uh, They were under the oppression of the Romans at that time. They were hoping for somebody to come and rescue them. And they thought that this person might be Jesus. But their expectations had been shattered by his death. And yet now, three days after that incident, strange things had started to happen. They had heard that the tomb where Jesus' body had been placed was empty. Where had the body gone? Somebody had had a vision of angels. And strange things were being said, claims being made that Jesus was alive. And so they were wondering, what does all this mean? What should we believe? What is going to happen next? Now all of us are on a journey. Uh, We're on a journey that starts with our birth and goes all the way through to our death. And those journeys vary in in the length of time. Hopefully all of us will get a pretty good span of days. And along that journey of life, there are ups and there are downs. Uh, We all experience ups and downs. I'm sure you can think of some of the high points of your journey so far. And I'm sure you can think also of some of the low points of your journey so far. And times... When, like these two people on the road to Emmaus, we're pretty upset. We're confused about the circumstances going on in our lives. Desperately trying to make sense of everything and understand what the journey is all about and and what the things we're experiencing mean to us. And perhaps we, like they, long to discover greater understanding so that when we finally reach the end of that journey we're on which we call death uh, we will have some hope that there is something really really good something extraordinary beyond that point so what made the difference for these people on that journey that they went that day well they were very open in sharing with this stranger who suddenly appeared on the journey with them, but they didn't recognize who it was. Uh, Not quite sure why that was. He may have been wearing a hoodie or something, you know, and wasn't clearly obvious who he was. Maybe he was just kind of in some way supernaturally disguised. He was like Batman or Spider-Man or one of these superheroes that wears a mask, that kind of thing. But despite the fact that he was a stranger to them, they shared what was on their hearts, their anxiety, their frustrations, their uncertainties with him. Uh, and they kind of embraced, they listened to and received the teaching that he brought to them from the scriptures, which at that point would have been the Hebrew scriptures, the old, what we would call in the church the Old Testament, about the Messiah, about this chosen one and the fact that he had to suffer. That had confused them. 
but that he had to suffer. And they welcomed him. They were so struck by this person that they welcomed him into their home when they reached Emmaus for a meal. I think they wanted him to stay overnight. They just wanted to spend time with this person because everything that he was saying made sense. And then they were thrilled when he revealed who he was. It was Jesus. And then, after he just disappeared, again, we don't really know what that means, he just disappeared, they got back on, in, on, uh, into their walking boots, headed back up the road to Jerusalem because they wanted to tell the other believers this amazing news. It is true, they said. Jesus is alive. It's exciting. Really exciting. Uh, and those three who are being baptized today, Alison, Sunita, and, and Alec, are a little bit like those two people on the road. Because they're two on, they are also on their, their journey of life, different stages of, of that journey. Uh, they'll explain a little bit of their own story in a, in a moment. Maybe they're a little bit nervous about that part, but it's going to be great because they're such always good stories. Every story is different. Every story is unique. And even the children here, you have a unique story that's gradually unfolding in your life. And every story is unique. Uh, they'll have common elements, I'm sure. And all three of their journeys have crossed at some point with the journey of Jesus to the cross. Probably at different stages in their journey. For some, quite recently. For some, maybe a little bit time ago. Uh, they have had to face this struggle to understand what might be called a, the tragedy of Jesus dying. What does that, that all mean? What was it about? What was it for? And then coming to a recognition of the reality of the resurrection of Jesus, the fact that he came back to life after three days, and what that means for us today. I uh, remember last year when we had eight dear Polish friends who came up from Clyde Bank to be baptized. Uh, one of the ladies, Czesława, didn't speak any English. Uh, she shared her story in her own language had to be translated for us. And that was the thing that really had gripped her as she read the Bible, was to discover that Jesus is alive. She more or less said what it says here. It's true. The Lord has risen. And I've met him. Uh, it was just so exciting, the impact that that uh, fact had upon her life. And the same will be true for the three people today. A uh, part of that kind of understanding comes through reading the Bible, through the, reading the scriptures, uh, and what they teach about Jesus in the Gospels and in the New Testament. But even more significant, encountering the living Jesus at work in your life, seeing the things that he is doing, what seemed in the past maybe be coincidence, actually become God incidents. And that's something of what I'm sure they will share in a moment. Whether you live in first century Judea, or whether you live today as we do in 21st century Scotland, the truth of that, I believe, hasn't changed. People often think that Christianity is primarily about morality, which is a big word, which means talks, talking about the way you behave. How do you behave? And the kids will all kind of have an understanding of, of, of that and, and what your parents and your teachers think about how you behave. Are you good or are you bad? Maybe you have good days and bad days because actually there's a bit of both in all of us. But Christianity, in fact, is not so much about making bad people good, although that's a little bit of it. Ultimately, Christianity is about making dead people alive. And that's even more exciting. There is a verse in the Bible, uh, in the letter Paul wrote to the, to the Romans, that says the wages of sin is death. 
sin is a little word that just talks about the bad choices that we all make that causes a separation between us and God. Our pride, our greed, our selfishness, which create a barrier that we can never get past between us and a perfect creator. And for people who needed a saviour, God sent, or for people who needed saving, God sent a saviour, Jesus Christ, who walked on the earth 2,000 years ago, who experienced, like us, the joys of life and the struggles of life. A saviour who once said, I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. So how can we experience that life that Jesus offered? How is it possible? Well, it happens through the cross. For as Jesus hung on the cross, dying, an extraordinary exchange occurred. For he took on himself all of the sin and shame of us. Our sin and shame. Our bad choices and fears. And he placed on us instead in an exchange his life his joy his peace his hope his freedom and I'm sure some of that will come out in the stories that the three folks will share too and maybe at times in your life you feel like you're carrying just a heavy load burdens weights with a sense of guilt that just never seems to quite go away You don't need to live like that anymore. Like the two people on the road to Emmaus, like the three folks that have come to be baptized today, Jesus has come to give you life. Life in all its fullness. Freedom and peace. So I invite you to to join me in saying a prayer. It's an easy thing. It starts a new life off in you, which is a harder thing, but it's an easy thing to do, a decision to make, and you can do it with a prayer. So I'm going to pray a very simple prayer now, and if you want to join with me in this prayer in your heart, quietly, silently, then you can do that. So let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your love for me. Thank you for your life here on earth. Thank you for your death on the cross. I'm sorry for the bad choices I've made. For the bad choices that have wounded you and hurt myself and others. Please come and live within me and guide me by your Holy Spirit. May I know your life in all its fullness. Amen. And if you have prayed that prayer, then tell somebody. Tell somebody that you know that already is on that journey of faith. Uh, Tell somebody here uh, in the church. Uh, We have a prayer ministry teams who meet over on the right hand side of the church just in the comfy chairs there who who like to pray with people after the service and you could go and pray with them too so uh, we'll come to that uh, point where we're going to share uh, we'll give the opportunity to Alison and Sunita and Alec to share just a little bit of what has brought them here today before we come to the point of baptising them so we're going to hear a little bit of their story Uh, Each of them has chosen a song which means something special to them and uh, after they've spoken we're going to have their song. Apart from Alec because his has been chosen to use as the final song which is Be Thou My Vision. Uh, So I'll have Be Thou My Vision right at the very end of the service. Uh, But these are songs that mean something special to them. So I'm going to pray uh, quickly for them and then one at a time alphabetically which I think will mean Alison, Sunita, then Alec uh, we're going to have you up to have a little for you to share so 
Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this very special day. We thank you for what you have been doing in the hearts of Alison, Sanita and Alec, for bringing them to this point today to be baptized. For each of them that is an act of faith, but also an act of obedience. It's not an easy thing to do. I know that maybe they're a little bit nervous and we pray for peace just to flood into their hearts now uh, as they share with a few words and then in baptism uh, of what they have discovered uh, in their new relationship or maybe not so new relationship with Jesus. And we ask that in his name. Amen. Alison, would you like to come up and uh, share uh, a little bit first with us and then we'll have your song after that.